Hello, this is Vern, and if you find that it's easy to play it cool with guys that you're not into, but when you feel attracted to one, you get attached too soon or fall for him too quickly, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can stop this painful experience from happening once and for all. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner, Without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, silly techniques, or games, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. My heart goes out to you if you're someone who's experiencing the recurring event of falling for guys too quickly, and most times those are guys that may not be the best fit for you, but when you get that level of intensity and when you get that level of attachment too soon, two things happen. One, you feel more anxiety than necessary. When you date the guy, when he doesn't call you, when he doesn't text you, when he takes too long to respond to your messages, you feel like something's happening and like something's missing in your life. And something else that happens is that you probably become a little too needy with him. You put more expectations on him than the relationship calls for. And when that happens, it's likely that he can feel scared and run away. One of the reasons why I decided to do this video is because I posted to my community this week a few challenges that women face commonly uh, from my experience of my clients and people I connect with. And the number one issue that you guys voted on this week that you were having challenges with is falling for guys too quickly. So I'm listening to what you're saying and I want to make sure that I give you feedback to what your needs are. So what I want to do today is divide this video in two and give you two things that will be very helpful in you making the jump from feeling like this is something that you don't, don't have any control over to something that you can start handling starting today. The first part of the video is going to be the mindset. What's the psychology behind someone who experiences the feeling of getting attached too quickly to guys that they're attracted to? And the second part is gonna be the specific steps you can start taking uh, from today forward so that you reverse this curse, so to speak, and experience fulfillment and joy and inner peace as you date guys and you find your best option. There's two big fears that permeate an experience of falling for someone too quickly. The first one is the fear of not being enough. Because when you have that fear inside of you, and, and all of us have it at some level, but when that fear is accentuated in a way that's unhealthy for you, then when you connect with someone, your predominant thought isn't, evaluating if he's the right fit for you or not is making that decision too soon and then asking yourself the question incessantly, am I good enough for him? Does he still like me? Does he still love me? Does he still feel the same way as he did before? And that's something that takes away so much joy, can zap away the joy from any dating experience. The second fear that permeates this experience is the fear of abandonment. When you fall for someone too quickly, there's a fear inside that says, if I don't hold on to this guy right now, then he might leave me. He might not stay with me. I need to do more. I need to show up more. I need to make this a higher priority, maybe than the relationship and the depth of connection calls for, and then it becomes unbalanced. So the first message I have for you, if you're experiencing any of this, is that you are not stuck for life. This can change. How do I know this? Because I've helped so many clients who came to me this being one of the challenges they're experiencing in dating, and they've had so much better experience since then, and some of the things that I'll share with you will make a difference. If you'd like to learn how you can create a conscious dating strategy where you can connect with better quality men and have a better experience in dating, then make sure to go to the first link in the description of this video where you'll see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email, and you can start watching my free training right away. There's six subconscious beliefs that might be keeping you prisoner in a cycle of falling for guys too quickly. You don't recognize them uh, necessarily, and it's not something that you consciously decide to believe. Obviously, you're a smart person, so you wouldn't say, I'm going to believe something that will be so detrimental to my health and my well-being, but you might be falling prisoner to some of them, and I want to make sure that you recognize them. The first belief that you may be falling prey for is a myth, and it's, my life will go from gray to bright. That's when you feel like your life is a little bit lacking in intensity, in greatness, in fulfillment, in joy, in excitement, in passion, and you feel that when the guy enters your life that he will be somewhat the answer to your prayers of challenges, of boredom, of uh, lack of excitement, and whenever you subconsciously believe this, then it's far more likely for you to get attached to someone too quickly. Why? Because if he's the answer to your prayers, if he's the guy that's going to come to turn this world from gray to bright, then the thing to do is hold on to him. But whenever you do that, then A, it's not true because no one can bring to your life 
uh, a level of excitement that is not fundamentally there in some way to begin with. And second, because you put undue pressure on him to become your oxygen, which makes him typically want to run away. The second belief that you may be falling prey for is that the way you feel about him dictates his worthiness. Like the more you feel attracted to him, the better he is. And sometimes you might be falling for guys for the wrong reasons. He, you might be attaching to guys who are not the right fit for you, but the more you subconsciously feel that this great feeling that you're having is because he's an amazing guy without really evaluating it, or that the strong feeling means that you've found the one, then that becomes a real strong challenge, which leads me to my third belief. If I don't secure this guy fast enough, someone else will snatch him. When you connect with someone and you feel like he's a quality guy and you haven't connected with quality guys in a while and there's this scarcity mindset that enters your brain and your heart all at once, it says, well, if I don't move things forward really quickly with them and that becomes, uh, that, that might be seeing him more frequently than you need to, having sex with him too soon, maybe becoming exclusive without really getting to know him because you have so much passion for him and he has so much passion for you. Whenever you feel like uh, if you don't secure the dude that someone will snatch him away, you will typically make the wrong decision. Number four is, we talked a little bit about it already, which is the myth of the one. The myth that there is one human being out of all the souls in the planet, before, past, present, and future, that is meant to be for you. And, and, and if you don't connect to that one, then you miss out. Whenever you fall into this BS type of thinking, and it's well-intentioned, uh, and I understand why you might be falling for it. There's thousands of novels and, and, and stories and movies and even children's books that tell you that the one exists. Whenever you fall for that, then the likelihood that you will fall for guys more quickly is greater. Why? Because if you feel the right chemistry and you feel the right type of virtues in that person, if that's the one, you want to do everything in your power to make sure that it happens. And typically, you make the wrong decision as well. Fifth belief is, when you subconsciously think, if it's not him, it might take years before I meet somebody else. Again, the lack of having a strategy, the lack, which is one of the reasons why I suggested you get my free training, the lack of having a strategy and a conscious dating practice makes you unable to see when the next guy will come. So whenever you have this mindset of, if it's not him, who knows when the next one will be? Again, you might fall too quickly for someone because you want to A, secure that, and B, make sure that you don't end up dying alone. <laughs> Number six, whenever you say to yourself, this, and this is so frequent, uh, he's everything I've been looking for. Like, you don't know the dude, you just met him a couple, I mean, one day ago, but you tell yourself he's everything I'm looking for, he has all the qualities I've been searching for, we're so alike, when the reality is, it seems like you're so alike, and it seems he has everything you're looking for, but the reality, months down the line, might be completely different, but you tell yourself that lie, and you believe in it, then again, you're gonna fall for him more quickly because why shouldn't you fall for a guy that has everything you've been looking for your entire life? What I wanna do right now is I wanna go through what you can do. Once you understand that these beliefs might be hidden in the background, what are the things you can start practically doing to ensure that you stop falling for guys too quickly and you stop feeling attached more than you need to with someone who hasn't proven himself to be a worthy candidate for you. Step number one is turn it up before you meet guys. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if you are in some ways creating a strong feeling of intensity with guys, and that's part of the reason that's creating this biochemical explosion in your mind and heart that's making you hold on to someone too quickly, that you get the practice of creating the intensity that you need in your life more frequently so that by contrast, the guy who shows up for you, who may not be fully vetted, doesn't feel like a day and night difference from what your experience is, the more you turn it on yourself, the more you create the intensity and the fulfillment you need, the more you'll bring to the table, the more you'll be able to relax, the less you'll have to take bad situations or bad experiences or crap from guys who maybe are not great for you, but you feel that sense of, he's bringing something that is so lacking in my life. Number two thing you can do is to develop a mindfulness practice. I know you might feel bored when you hear this, but if you develop the practice of meditating at least for five minutes a day, start with that, something so small as five minutes a day, where you get a chance to let all your thoughts, which might come flooding at once, fall to the wayside and focus on one single phrase or one mantra that you're repeating again and again. As you do this, the first times you do it, it's gonna be so painful, but the more you do this, the thing that you'll develop is the skill of being able to 
Notice the beliefs that take place, notice the thoughts that take place, and not believe them as true, but take one step of distance and understand that the thoughts are not reality. Why? Because next time you connect to a guy, you have a mindfulness practice, it'll be a lot easier for you to step back and say, well, I've been telling myself this is everything I'm looking for, but maybe it's not true. Or maybe you start thinking that if I don't go for this guy right now, who knows how many years will pass before I connect to somebody else. And then you say, you know what? Is this reality or is this just a scarcity thought? It's a scarcity thought. So the moment you can create the skill and it takes emotional practice and discipline to create this, the more you're able to step one step behind your thoughts and recognize when it's happening that you have control over your life, that you don't have to fall for the things that your brain is telling you in that moment are true, the more you'll be able to make better decisions going forward with guys. Third thing you can do is to create a lifestyle that puts more men in your vicinity and your rotation. Why? Because if you have the belief subconsciously that God knows when the next guy will show up, but it's not just a belief, it's a reality, because what you're doing right now is not much to be able to connect with guys, then what needs to change is the things that allow you to be in contact with more men, both in online dating and in offline dating. The number of interactions you have with guys, the number of times you initiate saying hi and dropping your handkerchief, the number of events that you go to, the number of uh, human beings that you interact with so that outside of your own circle. If you go to work, come back home, go to your same circle of friends, you're going on this uh, little hamster wheel of experiences and you're not, you're not seeing those guys because you're not leaving your comfort zone. You have to be willing to leave your comfort zone to raise the bar and the number of guys and the quality of guys you connect with. So make sure that you are creating a lifestyle that puts you in contact with more men. And one way to do it is make sure that you're counting how many new interactions with guys that I did not know that I have this week. And if the answer is zero, usually, or one, you, my friend, are on a five or 10 year plan. So it's time to change that. Number five, pace yourself in the frequency. When you finally connect with guys and you start feeling attractive and you start dating him, you're going to create a discipline where you're not going to see him as frequently as you normally would. Not because you're playing games, but because you wanna make sure that the next time you see him, that you've missed him a little bit, he's missed you a little bit, you've had time to, those, those emotions have had time to circulate through your system, that you're still doing things that are exciting in your life, that he's not the thing that's filling up your entire being. And then when you see him, then it's going to be something like a house that is built on a strong foundation. Think about it this way. You can date as if you're going to a burger joint, which means you can go get into the fast food thing, three minutes out, you have your burger, or you can date as if you're going to a three Michelin star restaurant. One is exponentially different than the other. Why? Because you're gonna sit down in that restaurant and you might have a seven or eight course meal, and it's gonna take two or three hours to go through the meal instead of five minutes to go through the drive-through, eat your burger and leave. When you date guys, if you fall for them too quickly, if you start creating the I mean, instead of seeing a guy three times the first week you met him, but you see him once a week, that's going to slow down the pace. That's going to make you feel less attached more quickly. Uh, next part of this, which is hand in hand with the experience of pacing yourself as you date is, do not fall for the texting fallacy or the texting false intimacy principle, which means whenever you connect to a guy and then you spend hours connecting via text, you think you're getting to know him, but you're really texting him, which is the worst form of human communication. You will create a false sense of, I know this dude, he feels for me. We have this level of intimacy when it's not intimacy and it's not really getting a chance to know him, but you're creating this dynamic that is not nothing wrong with texting a guy, but when you text a guy that you just met 50 times in one day back and forth, that's too intense, that's too much. That's gonna make you fall for him more quickly than you need to because you're gonna feel that you know him better than you do. So pace yourself in the frequency of texting, pace yourself in the frequency of seeing him and make sure that you're getting a chance to evaluate who he really is versus who you want him to be. Next one, number seven. The last one that I'll share today is wait to be intimate. I just created a live broadcast uh, a couple of days ago that shared an hour worth of dive deepening into why you should wait to have sex with a guy. This is one of them. When you have sex with a guy too early, you fall for him more quickly, you feel bonded and attached to him. When you have physical contact with him, uh, that's not sex but it's still intimate enough, then again, your hormones and your mindset will shift in such a way that you fall for him more quickly. So pace yourself in the level of intimacy that you have with him. Wait to have sex until you're exclusive. If you want more details on how to do that, how to set that boundary, I'll link it up in the description. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. If it is, and you want to learn how to go further and how you can attract the guy you want 
with less pain, then make sure to hit the first link in the description where you can find, watch my free training. If you enjoy this video, click like or thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when new episodes that come out. And if you find that you've been going for this result, which is not falling for the wrong guys, and you haven't been able to be successful, if you don't know how to consciously date, and you don't want to take more time that's necessary, uh, and you want some hand-holding and help, second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me, and worth it, we'll be able to get you the result that you want in a fraction of the time. Thank you so much for connecting with me. As always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.